Hello everyone. So this is a tutorial about instrument flying. So according to me, instrument flying cons consists of mainly two important things. That is one, imagination. Imagination. Two is your scanning of the flight instruments what does this word imagination mean imagination is basically the way how you perceive where your position is with respect to the airfield say example this is your VR station that is an airfield right so now imagination is your aircraft may be in any one of these four sectors right now imagination includes the point that you should be able to imagine where you exactly are at the current moment all right so that should be very quick and fast that will help you decide whether you have to come to the station go out of the station or do whatever procedure you want to to join the hold maybe an approach or all the things that are related to instrument instrument flying can be made strong on the basis of imagination now the second most important thing is scanning of the flight instruments now once you know where your position is suppose say xyz you are at this position now say you have to do some procedure related to any of the instrument flying procedures that is maybe an entry or a uh, interception or whatever once you know where your position is you have imagined then after establishing a particular procedure important it is that you scan the flight instruments regularly that is your heading your attitude your speed your altitude and your course these important things will help you maintain a proper flight path so let us start with the basics of instrument flying that is uh, I'll, we'll start with VOR what exactly is a VR station? So, VOR and radials. So, largely we generally use these days is the GPS navigation, but it's always good to have basics in mind since this will lay down your fundamental foundation. Okay, so a VOR station on an airfield is represented by this symbol with two arrow marks intersecting at perpendicular angles with arrows pointing outwards each has been divided into like say four sectors here 090 180 270 and 360 okay now <coughs> these are these lines that are there are called radials And radials are imaginary lines that are radiated of, out of the VOR antenna. So they help us navigate and route maybe or maybe come to a station, go out of the station on a particular track so that to avoid collision with traffic, uh, a safer and an easier path of traveling. So now Radials I have told is already an imaginary line. So uh, uh, an area is divided into 360 radials. So there's radial like 010, there's radial like 0100. There, there can be 360 radials at separation of 1 degree each. Alright. And uh, radials by default. Radials by default are always out 
of the station. So it is important that a student, a person who is pursuing aviation in terms of pilot career needs to understand where his position is with respect to the VOR. So say you are at this position, you should be visualizing that you are on a radial 150 approximately. All right? Say you are somewhere on this one, say you are on 060. Say you are on this one, you might be on 075. So it's important a student knows where he is with respect to the VOR station. So what I would suggest a technique, a faster technique to imagine is, you number these sectors as 1, 2, 3, 4 and ask yourself questions. Say I'll just give you an example, you are on radial 285, which sector are you in? So the answer is 2. So this should be, your imagination should be fast where you are. This is, this is north west of the sector, right? So number two, just this is, these numbers are not uh, standard. These are just random numbers. You can take any numbers for practice. So if I tell you, you're on radial 265, you're on, ra you're in sector three. You're on, you're in uh, radial, say 155, you're on sector four. So for example, this is important that you imagine where exactly you are with respect to the airfield. Now, there is a VOR indication in your aircraft. Uh, let us talk about uh, G1000 as mo most of us are flying that only these days. And also on any normal uh, VOR uh, instrument, you will have a pointer like this and you will have a tail. So the tail indicates your radial. Always. This is your OBS pointer. The tail indicates your radial always and this is your heading towards the station. In the Garmin it is a blue color line in the center of the HSI. Okay, So at, this is independent of the aircraft position, movement, speed, altitude, attitude, anything. This is independent of all the factors and it will always indicate your radial. The tail of the pointer will indicate your radial and the top of the pointer will indicate your heading towards the station. So if you suppose want to fly from your, your aircraft is positioned like this, at this point of time your radial might be 300. The, this HSI will show you 300 and the heading to fly towards the station will be 120. Right, so just just you just all you have to do is turn on to heading 120 to fly towards the station. This is the VOR instrument on the Garmin 1000. Next, what we'll do is we'll start off with course reversals. Course reversals. Now, course reversals, as the name suggests, it is reversing of the course on which you are currently. So, for example, you are on radial 150, and for some reason, you have to go back to the station. You were going out, all right. You, go, you took off and you are going out of the station and for some reason you have to come back due to traffic or due to some technical issue or whatever. You have to come back on this course back again. This procedure of following the instrument flying procedure is called course reversal. So you will have specific, there are three procedures I will tell you further. So basically when the aircraft is back onto this like this, this procedure is called course reversal. We have reversed the course and we are heading back to the station. Or it could be the other way around as well. You are coming in and there is a lot of traffic. He is telling you to go back onto the same radial. So this going back is also called course reversal. Okay. So now I will uh, tell you the three types of course reversals we have. First one is the procedure turn. Second one is the base turn. 
third one is the teardrop okay so procedure turn first we'll do the procedure turn now procedure turn is a 45 degree turn base turn is an 80 degree turn and this is a 30 degree turn I'll explain what what exactly these numbers mean so first one procedure turn procedure turn basically means you are on say XYZ radial any radial say for the matter let's take easier one to do is 090 you're going out on 090 and he has been told to come back on this radial due to some issue so first step you'll add 45 or you can even subtract it depends on the controller that uh, if he tells you to do a left procedure turn or a right procedure turn the standard is towards the right so the left procedure turn or the right procedure turn for the right we'll add for the left we'll subtract so 090 plus 45 gives you 135 so you'll turn on to heading 135 all right 135 heading and turn back onto reciprocal of 315 so now the first leg is the 135 leg that is you'll fly for one minute one minute and when you'll turn back you'll turn back onto heading 315 this will be 135 and 315 during this one minute you'll set your course to the opposite of this all right say in this case you were setting course 270 I mean 090 outbound and in this case you'll set opposite of that that is 270 so at this point in one minute time you can set course from 090 to 270 and then you'll turn back after the one minute ending you'll turn back onto heading 315 and then intercept the inbound course or the 090 fine this is a simple this this degree is 45 degree this this number is 45 so it's just just as it is just to turn 45 on the either side and then you just come back and 135 reciprocal of that is 315 turn back and then fly to intercept the inbound track this is done with the procedure turn second is your base turn base turn is the easiest of all and uh, it is the fastest and the easiest of all as well say again we'll take an example that's easy to relate with I told number 0 I mean uh, 80 degrees right so you're on 090 track and in this case what you do is you'll turn to heading plus or minus 80 degrees plus or minus 80 is what is 170 so you I'm, I'm, we're talking about a right uh, base turn alright so we'll turn on to heading 170 and the moment you hit 170 you'll turn back onto the inbound course without any timer the key difference here is this involves a timing of one minute that you have to keep track of here the moment you hit the plus or minus 80 degree heading you'll just turn left or to the right depending on your course so the moment you turn plus 80 degrees here in this case 170 and you'll just start turning back onto the inbound course of 090 or 270 is your course set okay this is the easiest and the simplest to do next is your teardrop entry teardrop teardrop I had mentioned 30 degrees right so I'll also again do the same example so that we can relate easily so teardrop is 090 here okay the aircraft is flying like this simple you just add plus or minus 30 degrees to it we are doing a standard one to the right so you'll fly heading 120 okay and the moment you fly heading 120 
you just turn back to intercept the inbound course this is for one minute this leg is for one minute and you turn back to intercept the inbound course other procedure for teardrop is also that you can also 090 120 and you can fly the reciprocal of this if you want to 300 and then intercept the course basically this is one is the one that is preferred and is the correct one this also can be done but this all the important thing is in this one minute as well okay so now the key differences are procedure turn 45 based on 80 degrees teardrop 30 degrees and both timer is there in procedure turn and teardrop turn based on no timer that's why it's easiest little less complicated to do and uh, it's simple to remember just 80 and then turn back in this case you have to calculate the plus 45 and then reciprocal of that and also the inbound course okay so these are the course reversal patterns next we'll do is the radial interception watch the next video for the radial interception part